<laughs> right, now we go on to the Davros section of that. <laughs> Your reflexes have gone! Do you think you are the first to try and kill me? That's time worth for the simple lure! A focal point for the assassin's bullet! Let the foreground guys come in, settle, and then go. Okay, got you. Round. Bit more smoke. Okay. Okay. Bit more smoke, please. Here we go. Still running. All right. Here we go. Make one. Just just fuck off. Here you go. Make quiet. Action. Right. Action. Right. Action. Right. Action. Right. Action. Right. Action. Action. I was interested to see all those, you know, the technically what we have to do in order to get the effect, you know, and it's, uh, it's an ongoing thing really, isn't it? Oh yeah, I mean, those effects and that was obviously much more archaic than it is now. I mean, yeah. now that would look, I, what we could do with that would be But it is great, oh god, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in time on the sounds of a nation, really, you know, yeah. 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 But, uh, and, and you, when you, you were, you cast him originally, well, you were thinking of casting him originally as somebody different character in, in well, Revelation. Yeah, Graham and I had lost touch for some time, and um, I, I eventually managed to get in touch with him. Uh, and he said, uh, I said, what are you doing? So I'm, I'm directing Doctor Who. And as most actors will say to the director, anything in it for me? He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he came back to me shortly afterwards and said, um, look, he said, do you want to play the part of the mutant? I said, yes, mate, yeah, of course I do, yeah, lovely, thank you. But anyway, it turned out that um, I didn't play the mutant. It was offered to somebody else, I understand, Graham, wasn't it, the part of the mutant? <laughs> 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 Derek Jacobi might have something to say about this. I, I offered it to, but I didn't offer it, it wasn't me. John Nathan turned and said, I've heard on the grapevine that um, Sir Lawrence Olivier uh, would love to be in Doctor Who. <laughs> love, because his grandchildren have all said, we're all saying, why didn't you be in Doctor Who? Um, so the part was done <laughs> because he was quite, he was very elderly and he was not very well at this particular time. So why John and Nathan Turner thought this, but anyway, he, he made contact with his agent <clears throat> and said <laughs> that he'd heard that uh, Sir Lawrence um, wanted to uh, get an opportunity to be in Doctor Who. <clears throat> Um, and so what do they think? They say, oh, it depends on the part. <laughs> he said, don't, don't, don't take him one day, one day out of his life, and it's to play a mutant. <laughs> <laughs> Who has to, at one stage, come out of the water. So and a, a foot of time. snow as well. A foot of, foot it of was snow. snow. It was, <laughs> you didn't know the snow was going to be there. No, 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 we turned up and it was, it was just a blanket. That was a surprise, but the agent said, absolutely not, how dare you? <laughs> that was it. So we never knew, I, would, I can't tell you whether Lawrence Olivia really did want to come in or whether he was, why did you say that? I'd love to have done it or whatever, but anyway, no, I often had to call him this day. <laughs> <laughs> but then I turned out, I turned up, you, you got it. Was, it was lovely because <clears throat> what happened was, we met, we, Colin actually came and had dinner, uh, because we had, so we were such good mates uh, when we were kids together, and, and through our lives we had conversations on the phone and met parties, but we'd never kind of continued our friendship. We were very good friends at school, and we still are. Um, at least I hope you think we are, because I, I, you are one of my special mates. Um, and special mate as an actor too, because I like working with Colin. I wish I could give lots of work to him all the time, because uh, he's really worth having on the screen, brilliant. But um, <laughs> So yeah. he's only, you, you think that's sort of an idea as well, yeah. I was going to tell you that, <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. No, carry on. But, 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 what, but what, what happened was that he came to dinner, and I'm going to tell you two stories about it. He, he likes fast cars and fast, even faster motorbikes. He likes a lot of noise. And uh, I said, why? And he came to supper, and he, in those days, he, I think you were driving, um, uh, I, it was a, a red or orange um, beetle, but it was souped up. This, had, this, this thing really could travel, and it, boy, did he let you know it was coming and going. Anyway, he came to supper, 
um, and we talked and eventually I said well look I have actually got part of a music um, and I really want it's got to be good because he has got you know, some scenes and he's really good it's, good it's a good but you will never be seen nobody will know who it is I mean so if you want a, a bit of a showcase for yourself it is, you're not going to be seen but blah, blah. yeah yeah I, I want to I love it I'd love to be a doctor yes please in my heart, there were two characters I always thought should be, although they were aggressive, nasty sidekicks to the main uh, character Clive Swift, they, um, I wanted the Lauren Hardy kind of feel, because I wanted a bit of humour in this very drastic, dark story. Um, so he didn't know, but I got back on Monday to work, and I said to John Nathan Turner, look, I met a friend of mine called Colin Spall. Oh, I know Colin. Um, oh, yeah, right. what, what are you thinking? I said, well, I've offered him if you're happy, because it was down to me, this this part I could cast myself. Everything else you really had to do, go through with the producer, get his approval. Um, so I could offer Colin this part. I said, I've offered him the mutant, but I actually, in reality, there's the other two characters, the Lauren Hardy characters, and I think he could be the Stan Laurel, and I'd lo he doesn't know, but I'd love to offer him that instead, because he'd be brilliant in that, with Trevor Cooper, playing uh, the opera, uh, opposite. Um, so, Colin didn't, I didn't read Colin saying, you'll never guess, but I'm able to give you something really smashing. I, I always hope it's really smashing, but I, but I was able to say through his agent, he doesn't know, but would you just say he's got the role and um, blah, 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 uh, and we're sending the scripts. And of course, when he got the scripts, well, you could say what you thought, but when he got the scripts, he realised um, it was a bigger, a bigger and a nicer part. Absolutely, I agree with everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I might have embellished it. Yeah, yeah no, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a nice shock, I must admit, when I realised I was going to play the office of the mutant. But uh, the would be class with uh, Solange Olivier, I've, you know, thought about the same part, me and, <laughs> me, me and Larry. You wish other mug could I get? <laughs> but it was a very starry story, that, wasn't it? I mean, in terms of cast. I mean, had an incredible. Yes, we had. Uh, yeah, Ellen Lebron. In, oh, she was. Yeah, she was good. And um, yeah, it was. It was. It was a tough story. Um, I think they all thought, and I think they still do now. The crew and the artists. But I think most people think I'm completely bonkers. But you'll have had a good day during the day because something fun will have happened. Well, it was laughing at me because I'm so plonker. <laughs> but because I do, I get things wrong. And uh, but what's wonderful if you get, and, and hopefully it will carry on. If you get things wrong, but. But the crew and the artists know that you, they know what you're dreaming of, but you can't reach it for because you've got your, your own way or whatever. They will help you get out of it. Now, sometimes they'll help you get out of it because they're not going to, they don't want to make a show that looks rubbish because it's their names as well. But I think most directors feel that the crew has worked with them uh, because they can see what you're trying to get. And if you've got energy and you, you've got desperation for an idea to get done, and they like it, they'll want to get there with you, they'll try and do it for you and help you get out. That's what I mean by Dougie holding up a pound going and saying, who'll oh, get me out of trouble, you can have this pound if you get... And they did, because they didn't want the pound, they wanted, they liked him, they wanted to make it good for him. And that's yeah. the joy of them. Um, Great, yeah. And it was the first time we'd worked together as well, and so that was because you kind of inherited me from, from the resurrection, <laughs> you know, you lumbered with Davros, and uh, you know, but it was, was a cracking story. It was a very, very, I mean, very dark. I mean, it had that John Holmes feel to it, really, didn't it? Robert Holmes. Robert yeah. Holmes. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. No, Eric. Uh, Eric. Sabre has had a lot of stick about his writing, and uh, I, I maybe I'm wrong, but I've, I've been to other conventions where. Um, I've heard people talking about um, Eric's scripts and even attacking him for his work. I thought he was a brilliant writer. Absolutely stunning. Complex. When you look at that story, it's very complicated. The ins and outs and the innuendo and the depth of characters and what's going on that he'd written. Um, I thought he was really classy. If anything was wrong, it's that it was complex, so complex, it was difficult to unravel the story as it went. But boy, go back and keep watching it and find more things in it, I think. Not, that's nothing to do with me, that's his writing. And I mean, that thing, I mean, it's become legend now about Daleks hovering, you know, and everyone say, oh gosh, the new series got Daleks hovering. He said, well, actually, they did it back in Revelation, you know. But in a sense, that came out of a, a problem we had on the floor. How do we get Davros down from the flight of stairs? <laughs> Was it not? And we would say, well, you know, we were, there was that discussion going on with JMT. It was, well, can he float? Can he